Hey, all right, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kevin, and today we're going to be reviewing Matt Schofield's first ever True Fire course called Blue Speak, which he put out uh, in late 2018. Now, I learned every note to every solo in this course, and in this video, I'm going to tell you five ways that it immediately changed my playing. All right, so if you're here, I'm making the assumption that you're already hip to Matt Schofield, one of the, the best modern blues players around, uh, sort of in the style of Robin Ford, heavily influenced by Albert Collins and B.B. King. You already know the guy if you're thinking about taking one of his courses. And I took the course because Matt's playing reminded me of the playing that was in my head, but that I was unable to get out through the guitar. He had built out the vocabulary and the phrasing to a degree that I had not. And so I thought that by taking this course, it was really going to help me say what I wanted to say on the guitar. So this is a performance of me playing tip and swing which was one of the musical pieces in Blue Speak. <laughs> Before I detail the five ways that this course impacted my playing, I'm going to explain to you exactly how I took the course. Now, if you're familiar with True Fire, you understand that each piece of music comes with tablature, with musical notation, uh, with, with several high definition camera angles. So you can also watch the artist play. And then you know, in the case of uh, a Matt Schofield course, Matt himself is going to be providing commentary about what he played as a part of the package as well. So there was, I don't know, maybe 11 or 12 different pieces of music inside the Blue Speak course that I learned. And what I did was I would learn one at a time. And uh, if I was working at something a little deeper in the catalog, let's say I, I had uh, completed five or six different pieces of music and I was working on the seventh when I would sit down at the desk to make more progress on that seventh musical piece or solo first I would make sure that I played through the first five or six so by the time I was at the end of this course and I was learning solo number 12 I was going through and I was playing those 11 solos before getting to work on that 12 solo, just to make sure that I had everything under my fingers. The, the whole process took me about three months, about an hour a night. I wouldn't say that I played every night, but I played most nights. All right, so let's get into the five ways that this course impacted my playing. Number one, and most importantly, it shifted my playing in the blues from a primarily minor tonal center to a primarily major tonal center. You know, I was coming from a place where I had been learning and playing a lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan um, and all that stuff is great. And I'm, I'm glad that I know it and I'm glad I studied it and I'm glad it's in my bag, but I wanted to add a little something to it. So whereas before I was sort of in this world, you know that stuff. That's all, that's all minor, you know, in, in tonality. And once I was done with 
the blues speak course. My instinct when, when grabbing the guitar to play the blues was more to play stuff like... <laughs> You know, stuff like that, which I think is definitely more up the Matt Schofield, Robin Ford alley. And it's, it's using a lot more notes. Um, and it, it, became, it became natural for me to play like that. These players who get the tag, uh, for better or for worse, of being a sophisticated blues player, they tend to be favoring a major tonality by default. And I was able to pick that up in this course. So, so that was great. Number two, my gravity on the fretboard changed. So what I mean by gravity is, uh, let's say I'm starting in a first position pentatonic. My, as the progression evolves and, and as the, the intensity and the, the drama of the, the band behind me builds, what I had always wanted to do was get up into this second position pentatonic, and then from there, right? You're you're in these habits of force um, from muscle memory and comfort and familiarity. You know, maybe you're you're playing over the one chord. The five chord is coming around, and you know you can just go right here to get a good sound. But you start doing it over and over and over again, and those are your habits. Well, Matt very much had a different gravity than I did, and it was uncomfortable playing the way that he plays. Uh, but I spent a couple months doing it, and all of a sudden it started feeling natural. So for instance, instead of wanting to go up into that second position, I might now want to go. Down into the fifth position, and I'm much more comfortable there. But basically, the impact is um, a stronger command of the fretboard is really a simple way to put it. Uh, I was able to just break some some old habits that I had. They weren't bad habits, but they were habits. And so, getting away from them meant growth. All right. The third way that this course impacted me directly was um, I learned a few cool licks, right? That that even now, years later, have stayed with me and still show up in my playing. Here's one, a Mixolydian lick that I recorded back when I was when I was taking the course. <laughs> All right, so, so here's another example that, that has stayed with me that came directly from this Blue Speak course. It's just a little lick. It starts in the fifth position like I was just talking about. It's going to the four chord and then it comes back to the one chord in the key of A. That's something that I'll pull out when I just go to the blues jam and I don't even think about it anymore. Uh, and it has that plane in the fifth position over the four chord uh, and then some really nice major and chromatic stuff to get back to the one chord. There's all Matt Schofield. Uh, okay, so the fourth way that this has directly impacted my plane, and I've touched on this a little bit already, is that I've become much more comfortable in the fourth and the fifth positions of the pentatonic scale. So I've already showed you some stuff down in the fifth position. So for an A, our fourth position is up here. You'd get something like. Now, before I did this course, I was familiar with the, the shapes for the fourth and the fifth position for sure. But I had difficulty playing musically inside of them. Um, and that's not the case anymore. I, I'm able to work myself up into those positions and then once I'm there, still be comfort comfortable and uh, get the ideas that are in my head 
out through the guitar. It's not just executing patterns from a from a fretboard diagram or something like that. Um, it truly is musical and free flowing. All right, and the fifth way um, that this directly impacted my playing, and uh, you know, not every improvement to your playing is major. A lot of the times, it's it's super incremental, and so in this case. It was just about some picking tendencies that I picked up from Matt. Uh, prior to taking this course, there, there were a lot of types of musical phrases that I would play where I would not articulate certain notes, you know, uh, for instance, or a lot of those trills and stuff like that. Hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides. And um, what I realized when I was studying Matt is he actually places pick strokes in a lot of places that I wasn't before. So instead of doing, he might do, or instead of, he might do, which is a slight rhythmic alteration as well, but it was really about the way that the, the pick stroke was articulating that moment in the music that was just a small improvement that I, I really liked and I found myself doing it naturally. So those are the five different impacts that Matt Schofield's Blue Speak course had on my playing. Number one, a shift from primarily minor tonality to primarily major tonality. Number two, a stronger command of the fretboard, breaking down habits. What I call it is a change to my gravity. Number three, just some cool licks to add to your bag. Number four, playing it in the fourth and fifth pentatonic positions, making music with them, not just running up and down the boxes. And number five, inserting some pick strokes where I wasn't before and enjoying the dynamics that that created. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you've got ideas for videos that you'd like to see me do, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Um, if this has convinced you to look into Matt Schofield's True Fire courses, go to his website and click on the links to his True Fire courses there. I know that that tends to put a little bit more money in the pocket of the artist, um, and it's a great way to support them. All right, have a blast learning how to play like Matt Schofield. Until next time.